Hello. Do you know, I went to the hairdressers this morning and this afternoon my husband said to me, aren't you going to the hairdresser tomorrow morning? I didn't even realise I had a haircut. Ah, men. Mm. Now, I'm going to go into the Donald Trump tweet. There's been a lot of talk about it, hasn't there? And it's been a big fuss. And Tim Pool made a video all about why he thinks Trump made those tweets. And he has, I think he's got that spot on. While this fuss is going on, nobody is paying attention to the restrictions that are being pushed through about who can seek asylum. And that's, that's pretty clever if, uh, if it really did turn out like that. And uh, Tim makes a very persuasive argument to support his theory. However, I have something which you might call a, a fleshing out on that. And I'm going to read the tweet that Donald Trump originally made. I believe he's made more since then. Why don't they go back and help fix the totally broken and crime infested places from which they came? Then come back and show us how it's done. These places need your help badly. You can't leave fast enough. I'm sure that Nancy Pelosi would be very happy to quickly work out free travel arrangements. I shall ignore the split infinitive there. It should be very happy quickly to work out free travel arrangements. But he's the president. The Democrats are, of course, screaming racism. Let me ask you, what would you do if the president said, I am a racist? That's why I said it. Condemning President Trump's racist comments directed at four of their own colleagues. And these comments are racist. And indeed, it wasn't very nice. It was very rude, as a matter of fact. And it was inaccurate, since the only one of them who had been born outside the United States is Ilham Omar. But I want to point something out that people seem to have forgotten. Donald Trump is the president of the United States. That means he's privy to a lot of information which you and I don't have. And I'm quite sure he has a lot of background on those four women. Now, I want to take a to break off here for a moment to tell you about my subscribe star account. I am not urging you to sign up to support me. But for those who do, they get a um, they get a special video once a month, which I make just for them. It's nothing amazingly remarkable. It's just little things that might have occurred to me during the month. And one of them was actually uh, some months ago. It was a video about Rashida Tlaib, which I had uh, paid attention to. Uh, there's something that happened that paid attention, but it was a very small thing and I didn't really know what to do with it. So I made the video and I put it up on my for my subscribe star supporters. And actually, you should know that if you want, you can just give a dollar a month. That's not a lot. Uh, subscribe star takes about a third of it in fees. So it's quite an expensive one from a point of view of how much you're actually giving me. I think, um, I'm not sure, but I think, you know, I, uh, uh, you, you, you pledge a dollar and, and I end up getting maybe 70 cents, maybe a little bit under that. However, every little helps as a famous supermarket round here in Britain happens to say. But that's sort of by the, by the way, I'm going to put up here a picture 
which was painted for Rashida Tlaib when she became a congresswoman. And I found it very disturbing and I put it up on my subscribe star uh, page, asked if anybody had anything to say about it. Nobody did, but now I have actually found a use for it, or at least for the knowledge. Uh, Rashida Tlaib describes herself as a Palestinian. Now look, Donald Trump told these women to go back when they happened to be, have been born in America. But he was telling them to go back because, well, that's their, well, that's their character. That's the character they project in their interaction with the public. They call themselves, uh, uh, Ocasio-Cortez calls herself a Puerto Rican, doesn't she? And Tlaib calls herself a Palestinian. So she doesn't call herself an American of Palestinian heritage. She speaks about a Palestinian, to the, uh, being a Palestinian to the extent that when she attended um, some sort of uh, celebration for her inauguration, she made a speech during which she used the words Palestine, Arab and Muslim, and not once did she use the word American. So her identity is very definitely that of something that is not originating in America. So uh, Trump's advice to her to go back to the mess of the country she came from when she didn't actually come from Palestine, there's a certain validity in there. That's not racism. That's a an idea that she is more loyal to somewhere else. And it's possible that he has more information than we have on the extent of her loyalty. I want you to look at this portrait. It shows Tlaib wearing a standard sort of Arab scarf, which was taken up by Yasser Arafat as a Palestinian traditional garment. It was all over the place uh, before that, but it's become that particular pattern has become synonymous with Palestine. It's a bit like the tartan, you know, the Scottish tartan. The Scots never had specific tartans for specific clans until the Victorian English decided that it would look traditional. And so they invented a whole load of various patterns, which then became clan markers. Um, and that's what sort of happened with that Palestinian uh, scarf, which is called a kafir. Anyway, back to Rashida Tlaib's kafir. If you notice, she's got it wrapped around the White House. Now, that's not an accident, can't be. If she had been shown standing in front of the White House wearing that scarf, well, that's perfectly reasonable. She reckons her culture goes back to that part of the Middle East that has been called Palestine. And if she wants to wear a garment that evokes that, well, that's absolutely her prerogative and there's nothing wrong with it. But extending it around the White House, no, that's not a fashion statement anymore. That's just a statement. And how it's not the only statement either. Because there's something else with that kafir. It's very deeply symbolic in another way. Now, I know there are people watching this video who will now accuse me of being some sort of Mossad agent. They've done it before. But actually, I don't think many Israelis are aware of the next thing I'm going to tell you. Well, one of my uh, financial supporters on Subscribestar is living in Israel. I'm assuming she's an Israeli. Uh, and when she saw the video, the one I put up about the Talib uh, headscarf thing, uh, she was really surprised. She wrote back to me. She said she had no idea about this connection with Yasser Arafat. Uh, but you see, I watch the Arab news media and it goes like this. This is a picture of Yasser Arafat. Notice the scarf he's wearing. 
It's not an accident the way it happens to be draped over his shoulder. He made a big thing of deliberately draping his scarf into a pretty good representation of the map of what is now Israel, Gaza and the West Bank of Jordan. I'll superimpose a map over that picture and you'll see what I mean. It was saying that the whole area, so far as he was concerned, was Palestine and belonged to the Arabs. Look, he was welcome to that opinion. I mean, he killed a lot of people in the process of uh, hanging on to that opinion and it didn't work out for him. But that was his thing and he stuck to it. Well, that and, and all the money he raked in, of course. But every Palestinian knows exactly what the shape of that scarf meant. And so does Rashida Tlaib. And inevitably, so do most of her followers. So when she shows the White House draped in that kafir, that is of significance, at least to her and her community, which, which Americans should not ignore. And that is probably something that Donald Trump knows as well, because somebody in his administration must have pointed that out to him. And so when he talks about those women, and frankly, they make me ashamed of womanhood, those, those females, they undercut everything about feminism that I ever stood for. Anyway, that's beside the point. Much of Trump's information is stuff that we aren't privy to. And I'm quite sure that somebody in his administration pointed this particular picture out to him and told him what it meant. Click on subscribe and then on the bell so you're notified of a new video. Occasionally you might find your subscription has lapsed without your knowledge. So keep checking that button. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe. And if you wish to donate, click the subscribe star link where you can make a one-off payment or set up a regular contribution or I have a PayPal account at grannyopteryx at gmail.com. Till next time.